So today's color grading will be from this to this. With only two important things, DaVinci Resolve color grading will be much easier and simpler. So let's start today's The Scenes. How's it going, people? Welcome back to another new episode of The Scenes, and thank you for tuning in again. So, DaVinci Resolve, what a powerful and useful, you know, color grading software. But at the same time, it could be dangerously complicated and difficult to touch, especially for people who just switched to this from Premiere Pro or Final Cut. You know, I was there too. So today I'm gonna share two important things which can make color grading much easier and simpler in DaVinci Resolve 17. Only four nodes will be used this time. So as always, let's breathe a new life into the footage. Enjoy. So this time, no complicated stuff like HSL, like a qualifier, a hue versus option, or mask. Let's be very simple and minimalist, but with two important things, which are gamma and color whopper. But first, let me give the contrast back to this image. So to get a contrast, let's use this normal contrast right here. You know, it's easy, just, you know, bring it up. You know, when you use this contrast, don't be, you know, don't be so perfect because you're gonna have to you know, adjust the detail by using those, you know, wheels, lift, gamma, gain. So what you have to care about is that you don't crush the shadow or, you know, blow the highlight out. Just find a good spot in between. So I'm moving this contrast back and forth both to find a good spot between the highlight and shadow which is somewhere yeah around this and also i'm going to use this pivot frankly easily this is you know where you can control the you know brightness in a very easy way so if you go higher the image will be darker and if you go like lower number, the image will get brighter, something like this. So it's like, you know, easy, like a brightness control area. This is a pivot. So I'm just gonna, you know, make this image a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna go lower number, something like this. So next I'm using those wheels. So very quickly, let me explain those. So the gain is where you can control the bright area and the gamma is for middle area. And the lift is for shadow, like a dark area. So first, obviously it's a too, like a bright highlight is too strong. So I'm gonna reduce this gain. So just bring this down, but also I wanna remain, you know, the good amount of light here. So, well, Probably around here, like a 0.91 and jump to the lift and I'm going to lower this to, you know, make the shadow area more darker, like a two, you know, get some like a, you know, punchy contrasty block for this image. This shirt, you know, black shirt and this hair, you know, it's kind of flat, like I it faded out. It's not alive, so I'm gonna give it some like a powerful and strong block for this image by bringing this lift down. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. So watch carefully around block shirt and the hair. Yeah, fine, it's good. And next one is gamma. And also this is the number one important thing this time. So like I said, the gamma is where you can control the, you know, brightness exposure of middle area. And this gamma is so related to the skin tone, the face. Because most of the time in RGB parade, the skin tone is at you know, middle area. And what did I say? Yeah, the gamma is where you can control the middle area. So now the contrast and exposure is good, but this face, 
you know, it's a little bit dark, but I don't want to change other things. So I'm going to bring this gamma up. So I'm going to boost it. Like almost on the face, you know, around middle area is getting brighter. Okay, good. So this is before, after, before, after. So that's it for the contrast. So next I'm giving the saturation back to this flat log image. What? Yeah, of course, it's still simple and easy. So first I'm going to boost this saturation here. So I'm just going to bring this up. And now the image looks a little bit like orangey, like a pinky. So I want to shift this, the total color to the opposite side of like orange and pink. So again, using this gamma, just grab this uh, point at center and move it to the green and blue side, just a little bit. Now it looks well balanced. So this is before, after, before and after. And next, let me use those log wheels for a fine adjustment of colors. So basically here is where you can get a certain look. We made a contrast for the exposure, but not for the color yet. Overall, this image has a kind of yellow, like orange vibes. Yes, right? So I'm going to give the you know blue to this image, which is the opposite side of the orange to the shadow. So first, I'm just going to emphasize this, you know, orange yellow feel by using this mid tone. So I'm just going to grab this point and shift it to the orange side all the way up. Looks good. And I'm going to shift this shadow to blue side. You know, basically it's opposite side of, you know, mid tone, you know what I did for mid tone. So I'm just going to grab this and shift it to the like blue green side like a watch carefully around this black shirt and this hair like a basically the shadow part yeah looks good so if i do before and after okay, this is before after before after so now the image has a you know color contrast you know what just happened here is that this image got a wide range of colors you know blue to orange and it makes the face which is orange and pink more like a, you know pops out and the last thing is color whopper which is the second important thing this time so color whopper is something like a distribution map of colors so this white thing shows the position of each color in this image now it's very obvious like the colors are gathering at this, this orange side and this blue side because I did you know that way in log node. You know this thing is very genius. For example if I select the color on this black chart and if I go like a right side you know it changed to like a purple like magenta and if I go left side it'll change to like green. And if I go down, it's getting more saturation. And if I go up, it loses the saturation. So basically, as you go like outside, you get more saturation. And if you go right side or left side, you can change the hue of color. So by using this, you can fix the you know skin tone without a you know, qualifier or a complicated mask or tracking, something like that just using this color whopper. So now the skin tone is a little bit, you know, too yellow. I want to give it a little bit like a magenta, like a pink, like human natural like a blood, you know, on the skin. So it place the mouse on the face. Like, and now, you know, I know which point, you know, I should deal with. And based on this here and here, but I don't want to change the saturation. So I'm going to only and you know, move this those points to right side just a little bit. So I'm carefully I'm gonna move this to right side. And this too, I'm gonna move it to right. Carefully. Okay, let's do the before and after. The before, after, before, after. Okay, I'm gonna zoom into this face a little bit. So 
before, after, before, after. You know, it's very small change, but you know, much better and more natural. Okay, this is it. I'm gonna turn off all of this and let me take you to the journey of all processes we did to get this look from this flat lock image. Enjoy. very simple and easy i'm done with this you're done with me right now so just go to you know conclusion part bye bye all right how was it you think you can do it of course as long as you care about those two important things gamma and color warper you can get cinematic look without a bunch of complicated nose but also definitely if you spend more time and energy on the image it can be more professional look so first try this process and once you feel like okay i want more watch my other davinci resolve color grading tutorial and if you have any footages that you don't know how to deal with just send it to me, like through an email, Google Drive, or some other media sharing service app. I don't know, whatever it is, just send it to me. I'm gonna make the episode about it, so let's learn together. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions about this color grading, don't hesitate to leave the comment below. And if you have any requests for next scenes, also leave the comment below. So today's topic is pretty much it, and thank you for watching this video. If you like this scene, show me a thumb and uh, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.